The furnace, which gives stars their energy, is a fusion-powered core driven by gravity. Elements beginning with hydrogen are compressed within the depths of the star with such pressure under the force of gravity that the atoms fuse, and when this happens, tremendous amounts of energy are released, and a star is born. Hydrogen is transformed into helium in this process, which has two protons per atomic core. Helium is transformed into lithium, which has three protons per atomic core. The more massive the star, the longer this process can go on, all the way up to the element manganese, which, when fused, becomes iron. When the gravity created by a star's mass is no longer sufficient to continue fusing elements up the atomic chart and fusion stops, the star explodes. We call this a supernova. There are other types of novae, but they are a topic for another video. The universe is old enough that events such as supernovae are relatively common, and they represent the one-time death of a star. After a supernova, its core will either collapse into a neutron star, a black hole, or be entirely obliterated by the force of the explosion. But in the far distance of the universe, hundreds of millions of light years away, an exotic type of explosion occurs. In some ways it resembles a supernova, except it is comparatively brief, lasting only days to minutes. Among typical supernovae, by comparison, the light and energy from their explosions is visible for weeks. These brief but energetic events that can give off just as much energy as a supernova are known as luminous fast blue optical transients, or LFBOTs. When a typical supernova occurs, much of the dead star's material is blown away into the depths of space when the star explodes, and the remainder is pulled down, compressed, and crushed by the enormous force of the star's titanic gravity. The gravitational compression is so powerful that the electrons of the atoms are ripped away and the cores of the atoms are crushed together, forming an exotic, ultra-dense material that is the stuff of neutron stars. Or, if the gravity is yet higher, the compression doesn't stop. The matter is pulled inward and inward into a singularity known as a black hole, which we can see here. The tremendous energy generated by LF bots may have a similar underlying mechanism sort of the death rattle of a star in its last moments. But if so, the briefness of the event is confounding. These LF bots, luminous fast blue optical transients, explode with the shattering power of a supernova. But the fast in the name isn't figurative. A flash from an explosion might last only a few minutes, with life cycles ranging into days, in stark contrast to your typical supernova which carries on for weeks. LFBOTs are recent discoveries, having first been found in 2018. They've been spotted by 15 different telescopes around the world. There are several prominent theories on what powers the enormous amounts of energy that are quickly generated by LFBOTs. These include the conjecture that LFBOTs are the results of neutron stars crashing into each other, or black holes quickly swallowing up stars. It is in fact possible that there are different mechanisms behind the various LFBOTs that have been observed so far. Right now, no one really knows what's behind them. There are just too few known to make any sort of meaningful conjecture, especially regarding objects that are so distant. The closest that have ever been observed are hundreds of millions of light years away. And to this date, only just over half a dozen have been cataloged. To truly understand them, more observations of more LFBOTs will be needed. Anna Ho, a lead researcher looking into LFBOTs, noted that dead stars are in actuality very active. I like to think of them as star zombies. They might be dead, but they are still up to stuff. They host exotic forms of matter and channel enormous amounts of energy, as well as creating tremendous space-time curvature and gravity waves. And every now and then, something falls into them, or they run into one another. And when this happens, the results are spectacular. LFBOTs are usually found within star-forming galaxies. However, there is an exception, the Finch. Let's pause and take a moment and look at the naming of LFBOTs, because they acquire monikers such as cows, finches, and Tasmanian devils. This whimsical tradition of naming these most powerful of astronomical phenomena after Earth animals happened when the first LFBOTs ever identified in 2018 
was, quite by coincidence, designated AT-2018 COW, or COW. This led to astronomers dubbing further discoveries of Aleph bots by other animal names. AT-2020 MRF became the camel. AT-2023 FHN became the finch. And so on. So, back to the finch. The vertical and horizontal red dashes in this photo illustrate the location of the finch. It is tens of thousands of light years outside of any galaxy. All LF bots observed prior to the finch had been found in the arms of star-forming galaxies. And it was assumed, up until the discovery of the finch, that LF bots were the result of a rare type of core collapse supernova. The types of stars that form supernova are very large, very massive. And these types of stars are short-lived, with lifespans ranging into only millions of years. This is in stark contrast to smaller cooler stars like our Sun, which has a lifespan estimated in the range of 12 billion years, or red dwarfs, which can live over a trillion years. And it would be impossible for such stars to form in a galaxy and drift tens of thousands of light years away before going supernova. Such drift itself would take hundreds of millions of years. So the finch may indicate that there is another causal mechanism behind LF bots, or at least some LF bots. One theory was that this particular LF bot was the result of an intermediate mass black hole between 100 and 1000 solar masses, shredding a rogue star drifting between galaxies. However, there is another possibility. At the vast distances LF bots have been observed, the closest being hundreds of millions of light years away, small structures such as star clusters would be virtually invisible. It is possible that a star massive enough to become a supernova at the end of its life formed in a small star cluster orbiting one of these galaxies. Star clusters contain gases, of course, that can form stars, and young star clusters are often active stellar nurseries. The Finch also hints that there may be another mechanism behind at least some LF bots, colliding black holes, or perhaps black holes colliding with neutron stars. Black holes don't last forever. However, there are so many zeros behind the span of their lifetime that they might as well be forever. So it is entirely conceivable that a black hole could have been ejected from a host galaxy and drifted for billions of years, and drawn by gravity toward another wandering black hole, eventually collided with it, forming an intergalactic LF bot. But the most exotic LF bot, discovered just over a year ago in 2022, is the Tasmanian Devil. The Tasmanian Devil is about a billion light years away. And over 120 days, it has been observed to explode 14 times. Anna Ho, the lead researcher on the project observing it, suspects it has exploded many more times than that. Each explosion of the Tasmanian Devil has been as powerful as the ones before, and also short-lived. Radiation releases sometimes lasting only minutes. It is like watching a star go supernova over and over again, as if caught in a time loop. Though it is not believed that something so exotic as a time loop is the cause of these repeated explosions. The present going theory is that the Tasmanian Devil is the result of a failed supernova. The progenitor star had about 20 solar masses, and at the end of its life, rather than exploding, the core collapsed directly into a neutron star or a black hole, leaving itself surrounded by the material of its outer body. And the core occasionally consumes some of that material as it falls in. The material is shredded by the black hole or neutron star's tremendous power and explodes, emitting the Tasmanian Devil's characteristic repeated bright bursts of energy. At this time, not even a dozen LF bots have been recorded, and they are so far away it is impossible to get a discrete view of what is going on, meaning that scientists can only speculate what creates them based on the nature of the energy and how that energy hints at the originating object's mass, spin, magnetic fields, and other characteristics. But at this time, there just have not been enough observed LF bots to really understand what is happening. The majority of LF bots have been observed in the spiral arms of galaxies where star formation is going on, except for the finch, which may possibly have occurred, all by its lonesome, 50,000 light years away from the nearest large galaxy and 15,000 light years away from the nearest small galaxy. And then there was the Tasmanian Devil, so much like an LF bot, except it kept happening over and over again. And it is possible that a different mechanism is creating each one of these LF bots. Only time will tell. At this time, the LF bot remains one of the cosmos's great mysteries. 
Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story, where we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. The channel has grown so much since it was created, and I would just like to take a moment to thank everybody for your interest and enthusiasm. Keep watching to learn more about the natural world and the amazing cosmos that surrounds us. And take advantage of our link below if you are interested in the arts and science of astrophotography. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe. And don't forget to hit that like button.